Hello and welcome to Autoinform online magazine, How To Workshop. My name is Frank Massey and in this feature we're going to demonstrate how to conduct diagnostic pen tests at the PCM. So within this module we're going to demonstrate how to strip the socket, how to use the multimeter and then compare those readings taking into account the entire circuit activity from the component back to the PCM. So first of all, I'd like to begin by stripping the socket. The first part is, and this particular socket design is increasingly now common. So first of all, there's this cam arrangement which securely locates the pins. Now, you also may notice the pins are very, very small. This is one of the problems now with diagnostics is actually getting connectivity at the PCM accurately and of course the pin sizes in the actual PCM are also um, quite small and the difficulty and the challenge is to actually get the means of measuring across these pins without actually damaging the pins. This particular vehicle um, has presented a very big challenge because the previous technicians actually damaged these pins and we've had to totally splice the entire loom on every socket. We've obtained second-hand components and cut the loom and spliced it, so a lot of work. And we're at the process now of testing the continuity from the socket to the component. So the first thing we need to do is remove this cam arrangement and there's a couple of drive dogs which in the correct position allow the cam to be removed. There's then a hood and there's a strain relief tie wrap around there which I've previously removed. We can then carefully just pull back a couple of little tabs and the hood slides off. Now the reason we're doing this is, well two reasons. One, we need to gain access behind the, the cable and without actually intruding into the cable itself. And we also need to examine the actual socket because these sockets have alphanumeric uh, numbering. In other words, we have one to four and A through, in this case, I think to G. And you can see from this diagram, the injectors are component Y3 Identified is the socket C, which refers to the, the physical connection on the ECU, and now we can see that the actual pins relevant to each injector, you can see that they're alphanumeric, and that of course refers to the physical uh, properties of the socket. Once we've established that, we can then begin our circuit testing. So the first thing to do now, and it's important if we're doing type of testing we are now where basically we're measuring the resistance down the circuit that we must remove the socket from the ECU. The circuit needs to be uh, unique and not attached to any other component functionality at all. We have a multimeter and the first thing I'd like to do is just check the reference. I'm joining both cables together and just seeing what the, the background value is. So we have 0.2 ohms Now what I'd like to do is, I'm using the same probes by the way that we use with the oscilloscope. These are all 4mm banana plug adapters, so they're totally interchangeable. Just remove that part of the probe, attach the multimeter. Now before I begin testing here, what I'd like to do is check the reference value actually at the component end, the injector end. That is the component only, not taking into account the wiring. Now, of course, the wiring circuit is open at this end, so I can now do a resistive check back at the injector and we'll obtain a value. So I'm going to connect the back of the injector on each side of the coil. And once again, these probes will not intrude on the cable and we have a nice stable reading 
0.61 of an ohm and of course around 0.2 of that is the value of the actual multimeter in the cable itself. So 0 0.60, 0 0.61, I would not anticipate any more than 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of an ohm through the loom back to this end of the socket. So we've already identified the alphanumeric reference for this particular injector and we now need to check that value back here at the PCM. So we're looking for around 0.6. Two possibilities. We can go to the back of the cable. So let's just try connecting at this side of the socket first. Now I'm showing you this way because there's potentially a problem doing it this way. One is that we may not actually connect on the back of the terminal and you can see from the reading there we are actually struggling to get down. I don't want to use too much force, these pins are very small and they desperately don't want to damage. Now we have a reading, 0.9, that's mm, a little bit more than I would have anticipated. It's stable, so I'll accept it. Now then, the problem with probing in this way is that by going at the back of the pins, there's the possibility that corrosion exists between the cable and the pin before it actually makes contact with the ECU. We have quite a high value, 1.1. You can see that the value does vary considerably as I move those probes. So you may get an inaccurate reading. That's one potential problem. So let's go to the other side of the socket. So we're dealing with row one and row two socket B. Now you can see we're getting a lower value. Now I'm being careful not to push on the back of those pins too much. These are quite fine probes that I've got and we have a value of 0 0.67, 0 0.68. So we have a, a differential of 0 0.07 which is acceptable. So, so far as continuity is concerned, I'm happy that circuit has integrity. It does not, however, prove it can carry current. So do not confuse this test with a current test through the circuit. This is purely continuity only. And I'm happy that the continuity, based on the process that we've used, that this circuit is good. Of course, the proof of whether the circuit can carry load, of course, is that there must be a load. But at least that test has confirmed that we do have a good circuit between um, the PCM socket and the injector. You could also use this method for wiggle testing. Wiggle testing is where you may think you've got an intermittent break in the loom, provided the probes are in and secure, and you may want to have somebody actually hold them providing they, they are secure, whilst you exercise and wiggle the loom to see if you get a variation in the reading. Um, there are some difficulties with that, of course, because quite often, and this vehicle is a, a good example of this, the loom really has a quite a torturous route between here and the engine, the components anyway, which is really why most of our testing now is done back at the ECU, um, where, as you can see, um, accessibility is uh, more favourable. We have of course cut back some of the taping on the loom for two reasons, identifying the wires by colour and as I suggested earlier so we can actually manoeuvre the cables into a position where the probe can be inserted carefully alongside the cable down hopefully to the back of the pin. So the, the critical components are very fine uh, strong but sharp, durable needles and direct access into the back of the cables and of course the schematics of the wiring are important so we can identify the alphanumeric coding of the socket. That concludes the how-to workshop and I hope to see you in the next feature.